What do you say, guys? Should we get? Should we do the show? Let's, do Let's the show get now. it started. Let's do the show. Okay, Alan. Just a country boy, and he's making it good. He was Jaws underdog, dressed in beaver rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of his green and headed for some cow. Wound up in TV and film, making popsicle proud. Now this country boy is back with his family. Got himself a podcast, he knows it'll last cause he's in Hickory. What up, Bumpkins? Welcome to episode 144 of Country Ish, and today's show, it's one big bloody bluegrass pigskin. Are you ready for some football? <laughs> I am App State is trending on Twitter right now. Find out why. Plus, what not to wear to work. Also, I got more money for y'all. I got more residual checks. Call in for a chance to win one. How much is it? I don't know. Stick around to find out. And in Who's Zooming Who, comedian and TV host Lee Cruz is going to join us from one of my favorite states in the country, Kentucky. Plus, intern Isaiah is here. He's going to give another Hayseed Gen Z movie review. And in small town news, a Hooters waitress was caught dipping hot wings in her vagina. Can you say fire crotch? Stick around. It's going to be a great show. We are live right now on Facebook and YouTube. But I got a couple people up in here checking comments over here to this table by himself for now. Uh, is uh, intern Isaiah, our resident Hasey Gen Z, and sitting next to him was Sergeant Mark Havaball, but he's on a run. So right now, don't say where. Invisible man. Yeah, he's the Invisible Man, but uh, he went to go do something. It's going to make sense at the end of the show. Anyway, leave a comment. Uh, you know, here's what we're doing. Are you on Facebook or YouTube right now? YouTube. Okay. So we're, we're live on Facebook and YouTube. The, the comments on Facebook, we see them, but then we can't scroll back. So it's like in the moment and then it goes away. Can't see them till the show's over or, you know, a week later. YouTube comments, we can see them live in the moment and we can scroll back, which is what these guys need. So I'm encouraging everyone to uh, leave a comment on the YouTube version of this show. And if it's funny and pertains to the show, we'll get to it. But let's move on. Let me introduce the guy sitting over here by his damn self. Very handsome fella. Oh, look. Oh, I'm glad you're watching. Yeah. He subscribed. You're on Facebook. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, yeah. This famous guy sitting right over here. Uh, he's, little, he's John Stamos' little brother, Marcus Stamos. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Appreciate that. What a clap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, much. I like your shirt, dude. Party crew of ninety. Is that your senior this is shirt? This my senior shirt. Thirty From, years wow. ago, still fits. Still fits. Look like at a, that. Looks good. Like a champ. So your slow. Every every senior year has a slogan. Yeah. Yours was party crew. Party crew of ninety two. I don't think they would allow that nowadays. They don't. Uh, you think? It's okay to have a party. What was yours? Was yours, wait a minute. Big dog. Big dog stealth. Get off the porch, porch or, something. or something stupid like that. Yeah. If you can't hang with the big dog, stay, stay off, off the, the porch. porch. Yeah. Something dumb. Yeah, and you, I think uh, we stole that from some shirt company. Yeah. You know. And then people that went to they made the shirts. Yeah. The students actually, I guess they still do. Does it have all the signatures on the back? It does. Of all the uh oh yeah, yeah there it is. <laughs> Fred T. Ford High School. 30-year-old Shout T-shirt. Out. Shout out to Haynes. Haynes. Haynes makes a damn good product. Yeah. Uh, sponsor, Thank you, uh, Michael Jordan is a Haynes guy. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Let me good ask you a quick product. question. This has to do with our uh, small town news story. Chicken wings. Love them. 
How do you like them cooked? Uh, fried and then maybe charred. I like a little char on mine. It's a dollar extra, but I like it. So let me ask you about that. Yeah. Charred, that word. Yeah. Does that mean it has to be char grilled? So you mean grilled, char yeah. grilled, like with charcoal? No, just put on the grill. It's got the little charcoal marks on it. But char means it's short for charcoal, right? Yeah. So well, if they just get it hot on both sides and they cook it and it's not charcoal, is that charred? That's a dollar, yeah. But I feel like you're getting ripped off if they don't I, use charcoal. Yeah, I don't think they're putting enough effort in for the dollar. <laughs> All right. I went deep on that. But, <laughs> but yeah, I like it, my wings, man. I love wings. Uh, buffalo is my thing. We're going to have some wings right. up in here in a minute uh, because Hooters is in the news. Uh, how, at home, though, let me ask you this question. Leave this in the comment section. Facebook, I'll get to it later. YouTube, maybe today, right? How do you like your chicken wings? That's what I want to know. Um, and last week, you know, I asked the question, have you ever been stabbed? Huh? And some of you answered that question. Uh, Jason Hartso, he said, stab myself with a sewing needle straight through the skin between the fingers. I was laughing. I forgot to put on, I forgot I put it on the armchair smacked the arm it went through and jerked it right back out Ugh. it went through eye first oh yeah wow so real quick yeah. yeah went through the webbing of his hand yeah uh, i first well that's good it went eye first i wouldn't want it to go any other way you wouldn't want it to go sideways that would hurt but yeah glad you're alive jason hart so uh, thanks for the comment now this comment marcus i saw this one Look how long, this thing is long. That's dude. a long one. This is a long one by Erica Pinley. And I was looking at it, and I thought, like, man, she really wants me to read this because look at all the effort she put into it. I don't normally read long ones, but because, you know, Erica, thank you for following, and uh, I want to make you happy. So I'm going to read Erica's comment. All right. She said, my joke's not funny enough to read aloud live in the show. Only funny thing is my money and the $5 I have. Well, don't have that either. Tried singing and was told not to quit my day job. So I tried to do some tricks. Yeah, I turned a few tricks <laughs> and went in the hole on that too. I died. Yep, finally bit the big one. Got to the pearly gates and there was the line. I was third in line. Found out in order to pass through those pearly gates, everyone had to answer one question. I listened to what St. Peter asked the first dude. He asked him, who was the first woman God created? I thought to myself, that's an easy one. Dude spoke up and said, Eve, ding, ding, gates open and the dude went in. Next one in the line was a chick. Again, I listened to the question. St. Peter asked the chick, who was the first man God created? I thought to myself, that's an easy question. Chick spoke up and said, Adam. Ding, 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 gates open, and she went in. Then here I am. I thought, well, I'm not funny. I checked out broke, and I owe all these Johns. Let's see if I could lose at this. St. Peter asked me, what was the first thing Eve said to Adam? I spoke up and said, damn, that's a hard one. Ding, 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 the gates opened up. Moral of my story. Sun shines on a dog's ass every once in a while. Wow. Did she go to uh, Woodstock 99, maybe? <laughs> Thank you, so. Eve Bindley, for that very long, fun little story. Um, sun shines on a dog's ass. You've heard that many times yeah, right? yeah. every now and then. It's like a clock. A broke clock is right two times a day. Yeah. Um, well, here is – that's me. I'm the sun. Shining on your ass by reading that comment. Uh, but thank you. Uh, I love it. People leave comments. All right. Steve Wilder. He says, I'm guessing the good times residual checks are about as good as yours. Uh, <laughs> we talked about J.J. Walker. Yeah. I bet you his are better than mine. Oh, yeah. They're, they're I bet he's, his are better than mine. He was on a sitcom. He was a star of a sitcom. <laughs> I was never the star. So and Good been, Times gets played. Good Times still time. playing somewhere all the time. Right. Oh, yeah. So I guarantee you, Steve, his checks are better than mine. Uh, Larry Boardwine, 
He's literally just like Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. Remember that? Yep. Yep, Ricky Bobby. And, uh, and I movie. said he had the Chris Elliott hands from Scary Movie. Yeah. The yep. little deformed hands. But he's talking about the scene in Talladega yeah. Nights where, where Ricky Bobby's in the them? interview and his hands just would float up like that. He's like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> that happens to people. Uh, last comment. Nikki Van Hemmelrijic says, I'm broke, but here is my support. You're doing great. Thank you, Nikki. I love that. Thank you, everyone, for leaving a comment. Um, we're not just a live show. We're also a regular show for your ear holes, right? We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Podbean, you name it. Anywhere you get a podcast, we're there. And if you want to help us out, you can join our Patreon support page, all right? Uh, go to countryish.com. And just for five bucks and up, you get access to our countryish. After dark. After dark show. Um, not sure when the next one's going to be. Maybe we should talk about that at the end of the show. Y'all be thinking of a date. You know, we did the last one last week, right? Yeah. So maybe like, you know, three weeks from now, we'll do another one. We'll come up with a date next time. But, you know, five bucks, you support the show and we zoom you into the show and. And we uh, play drinking games with you, and we get loose and have a good time. If you have zero dollars and you want to help the podcast, simply write a nice review on Apple Podcast, and we will read it on the show and give you a toot of the air horn. And this is the moment where I would normally do that. But guess what? We don't no have review. Any. No new ones. We're SOL. We are SOL. We're out. Of reviews, so we need you to go write a nice review on Apple Podcast. Helps us out, and then you get to hear our lovely Hasey Gen Z intern Isaiah read your words. So here's encouragement. You know, if I were you, and someone said, "Oh, I write it, you'll make Isaiah say it," I'm going to write something really stupid. Right? Yeah. I'm going to write something like, "My name is Isaiah." And I love getting teabagged. <laughs> five stars. And then he would have to read that. Yeah, as long as we get five stars, I don't care what you put You on. can say whatever you want. Just give us five stars. And, and I might him read say it. it. If it says that, I might read it. Oh, you're going to read it. Yeah. That's my job. No dip choice. Last oh, you'll be out of here. <laughs> uh, but we do have something that he can do for you right now. Uh, I didn't want to leave you empty-handed with no intern Isaiah Hasey Gen Z uh, language. So from time to time, I have him watch movies and give us a review, and that's what we're going to do right now. I believe we might have an opening for this segment. Well, he's a hasty Gen Z, speaking redneck and knees, burning up his noodle making inquiries. We get his take on shows like the Golden Globes or the girls humming in the city. All right. Thank you, Justin Clyde Williams. What do you have for us today, intern Isaiah? So over the week, I watched Logan Lucky with Channing Tatum and that feller from Star Wars. I think his name's Adam Driver. Yeah. He's the one on the bottom right with the fake arm. Yeah, that's Rilo Ken from the yep. Star Wars. Film. So I'm glad he's stuck with the Skywalker tradition. Of getting your arm chopped off. <laughs> yes. Yes, he has a fake arm in this movie. Mm -hmm. I've seen this when it came out, and I loved it. Um, yeah, it's a good movie. It got me hooked from the beginning. Okay. Because it started out with the John Denver song, and I mean, who doesn't like John Denver? Sure. Didn't you and Mark go to Aspen, Colorado one time and Wait find out that John Denver was a damn liar? You're talking <laughs> about Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> How dare you? Wow, that was funny. He's insulting you. That He's funny. calling you a dumb person. I know. But that was quick-witted. Good for you. Just keep in mind, any, anything that comes this way, I don't like friendly fire. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Mark Havaball is in the building. I snuck in. There you go. He's back in black. All right, buddy. Continue so your review. Channing Tatum is the main character. His name's Jimmy. Okay. And then Adam Driver is his brother, and his name is Clyde. All right. So, Jimmy Channing Tatum, he gets a job working construction at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Oh, see, local connection. So, mm -hmm. That's right local. And then he gets laid off, unfortunately, and he comes back to West Virginia. 
So he goes out drinking. Yeah. And his brother is the bartender at the bar that he's drinking at. It's called Duct Tape, I believe. Okay. And uh, while they're drinking, Channing Tatum comes up with the idea, you know, I just got laid off. Why don't we rob Charlotte Motor Speedway? Hmm. How so, do you? Uh, how would you rob a, a NASCAR track? Interesting. Uh, don't know. A lot of a, people up there. A lot of there. cars there that can Ooh, catch Ooh, I you. bet you're going to tell us, though. So they plan this scheme, but they need help from a guy named Joe Bang, which is played by Daniel Craig. Yeah, Look James at this Bond. cast. You've got, yeah, James Bond, Kylo Ren, <laughs> Magic Mike, right? Yep. And they're all playing like redneck people. Exactly. That, to me, right there. Dwight Yoakam is in it. Seth MacFarlane. I mean, it's a yeah. stellar yeah. cast. And when I saw this movie, I was like, I was like, man, why do they cast people who aren't actually Southern and rednecky to play this? And it kind of makes me mad because I feel like, you know, I should have been in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or I know people who could do this. And then I, and then I watched it, and, I, and, and Daniel Craig... He pulls it off. He's hilarious. Well, they all pull it off. Yeah, all of them. Adam Driver. All, Channing Tatum, that's easy for him. He's already Southern. Right. But go ahead. I'm sorry. So he's in jail, so they have to get him out of jail. Right. So Clyde, Adam Driver, thinks it's a good idea to do something to get him arrested. So he just drives through a gas station. <laughs> right. So that he would have arrested. to go into the jail. So he's in jail. And they plan this scheme to get Joe out of jail by throwing a, a prison riot, but it's like a fake prison riot. A fake one. So that's exactly what happens. They get Joe out of jail, and Clyde, Joe, Jimmy, and their sister, Melly, I believe that's her name. Yep, yep that's her. Now that's Elvis's granddaughter. Elvis's granddaughter's in this movie. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? She's, she looks good. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's the getaway driver. Mm -hmm. So when they break out, they head to Charlotte, North Kakalaki yep. to rob the Speedway. So when they initiate the heist, they cut off the electrical grid so they can't do any transactions. Cause, you know, so they're, they're robbing uh, 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 like the, the, the snack shacks and stuff that are inside the Speedway. Is that what you're saying? Like the food, the places that serve beer and... Pizza. No, there's like an underground tunnel where the money But all goes that money's through. coming from those places. Yeah. I've seen it. If you watch this movie, you see they're using like, you know how you go to drive through bank and you put the money? Tube. They go, vacuum. Va a vacuum tube. Yep, that's exactly it. So that's what the, <laughs> is that real? Do you think Charlotte Motor Speedway actually has vacuum tubes? I Googled it earlier, yeah. and they do not have vacuum tubes okay, underground yeah. where they transport money. That was a little uh, poetic, uh, little, little artistic uh, license there. I'm screwing that part up, but yeah. All right, so uh, what do you give this? So, or just fast forward to the end. What do you give alrighty. it? Do you, do you like it? Do you? Uh, how many stars do you give it? I give it a 7 out of 10. Yeah. I thought it was a pretty good movie. I mean, a great cast and everything. Um, who, who else was in this? There's like Hillary. So Swank. that guy on the left, that is Dennis Quaid's son. The far left? Yeah, with the cowboy hat on. Really? Yes. His name's Jack, I believe. Wow. And then I'm not sure who that guy in the middle is. And then, of course, that's Daniel <laughs> Craig. This. Mark, I think you would like this movie. I think I've seen it. I'm, I'm, it's, been, it's been out a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. To, uh, yeah, I think I've seen it. Some uh, okay. Well, but thank they you. end up robbing the bank. Okay, and stealing like I forgot how much money. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to spoil like the very end, but they're all at a bar and something happens. Okay, so I think that's what we got to do is do movie reviews, but spoil them. <laughs> that's fun. Spoil it. Spoil them. Yeah, no, but don't give and us the spoilers. Funny, I, just, I just saw the Elvis movie. Yeah, he died. <laughs> I don't know. How dare you? That's a good spoiler. Do you, can I tell you something? Yeah. I saw Titanic. Guess and it happens? sinks. It sinks. Yeah. But you know what I mean. Let's, let's yeah. be movie spoilers. Yeah. My cousin had no clue that it sank. So he went. I believe yeah, it. The Titanic. So he went to the movies with his girlfriend. 
And after the movie was over, he came back and told my grandma. My grandma was like, so Mark, how did you like the movie? And he goes, yeah, it was pretty good. But did you know that the Titanic sank? She's no like, well, You know, you can go to Gatlinburg and see it, right? Y- yeah. Gatlinburg's got the Titanic Yeah, they got boat. the Titanic Museum. There. I've seen it. I was yeah. there. All right. Thank you, Isaiah. Clap for yourself. Yeah. All righty. Now, um, did you hit the share button? Any interesting comments? In uh, Now, one of you is checking YouTube Right? Who's looking at YouTube? Now, Isaiah was just doing his work, so I know he wasn't looking at YouTube. Ball, you just got back in here. Um, are you in, are you up on YouTube or Facebook or both? I've actually got both, but I can focus on either or. So I think with YouTube now, you can scroll back so we can read comments yeah. that people let. You know how Facebook, you can't read them live in the moment because they go away? Yeah. So I'm, I've encouraged everyone to leave their comments on YouTube. Right. So focus on YouTube today. All right, let's move on. Let's plug some tour dates, baby. Uh, This coming weekend, I'll be in Phoenix, Arizona at CB Live, September uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I mean, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Going to be fun. Uh, September 9 through 11. That's weird. Uh, Oxnard, California, Levity Live. September 15 through 18, Naples, Florida, off the hook. September 22 through 24, Washington, D.C., the comedy loft. All righty. Uh, Marcus, how was your weekend? I bet my weekend wasn't as fun as yours. You were in <laughs> Texas, right? I was. Yeah, I uh, just laid around the house really lazy yeah. Saturday. I couldn't get off the couch. Sunday went out and done a few things, but uh, yeah. I want to hear about your uh, well, thank you. I was a busy boy. I was in Fort Worth. I sold out two shows Saturday. Bonus money. Big boop. And I uh, also, yeah. <laughs> I also uh, almost sold out the first show Friday. Second show, crowded but not sold out. And um, I worked with two very funny guys. And I, I put the picture up of all of us together on Facebook. And to the left is Des O'Neill. And to the right is Zach Webb. And, uh, you know, at the end of the show, I didn't have any merchandise. So all I did was hand out coasters. I tried to promote the cruise and, and the podcast. And I said, take a picture and then tag me. Put it on my Facebook page and I'll share it on the show. So I want to share some pictures that you guys left uh, in the comment section on my Facebook page. Here's one, Adam Timms. Me and Adam in the blue light hanging out. Uh, thank you, Adam. Uh, here's one from Courtney Aguilar. That's Christina Aguilar's third cousin. I don't know if that's true, but, you know, same last name. <laughs> Looks like her. Jessie Woodall uh, likes to give hugs. So she came to the show, had a good time. What else we got? Uh, Dylan Reed. That's him and his girl, I guess. Just not me in it, but that's fine. That's in the, in the showroom. What else we got? Oh, look at this one. We got Mike Gorman in that killer hat. Uh, He said, great show, John. Thank you, Mike. Glad you came. Hope you're watching this podcast as well. And thank you all uh, for coming and packing the house. I did did a thing on Late Show Friday I'm going to start doing all the time. Ginger's get in free. I love it. Second show Friday from now on. You're going to at least get two people in free. At least two. Yeah, at least two people. The second show Friday is the hardest one to get people to buy tickets for. So I thought, I'm going to give free tickets. There's nothing to gingers. gingers. <clears throat> so I'll you be doing that rare. in Phoenix. If you are a ginger and you're in Phoenix and you want a show for free, come get, out of the, come get out of the heat. I know it's hot there. This club has great air conditioning. Come get out of the heat and uh, laugh with John Reap. All right, let's move on to our first segment of the show. What do you say, buddy? Huh? Let's do it. All right. Well, here's what I do. I go to your Twitter, right? And I click on the hashtag button, and I find, what is it you're talking about? What are people talking about? And then I weigh in on that subject matter. You know, it's a segment I like to call... It's the best trends. Here's what you're talking about. All right. Brought to you by Hendrick Honda Hickory. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? How about a used vehicle? How about a hot dog? Go to Hendrick Honda Hickory. I'm happy to say I got my Honda back today. Oh, the other day. Uh, I was in the shop for a little while. 
and uh, uh, missed that car. I had to drive a stinky rental for a minute. Had a dent, not a motor or transmission issue. It was just a just dent. a dent. Yep. yep. Someone hit me, and I had to go uh, get it fixed. But here's what's trending. Hashtag App State. Now, that's a local thing here in North Carolina. Although, I think the nation is slowly figuring out the beauty of App State. So, college football kicks off this weekend. Actually, Thursday night, September 1st. A lot of new, a lot of games. But Saturday the 3rd, UNC, the Tar Heels, the Tar Heels, uh, are traveling to Boone. And they're playing against App State. And why, why, why is that trending? Why? Because uh, they're the underdog. UNC is uh, picked to lose this game by one point. <laughs> and here's what's weird about that. App State is not even in the same league as UNC. UNC is ACC. App State is what? Uh, anybody know? Like I'm what, what the conference quick. is? Uh, or it's like a division FBS. below. It's a, div- yeah. a division below. They're competitive no, in their uh, division. App but. State is Division One, and UNC is what Division One. Division One. Oh, okay. I thought they were in a separate well, division. There for a long time, App State was D two, and then D two, and then no. And I don't then know what it's called. In like 2017, they became a D one school. All right, let's go to the booth real quick because uh, our producer is a gra- He graduated from UNC. And uh, I want to get his take on this. Why is your school an underdog against App State? Uh, for no good reason. <laughs> it's some publicity. <laughs> What's going on? Publicity stuff. So, yeah, so we, we, uh, we did not cover the spread on uh, our first game this past weekend. We were supposed to win by 45, and we only won by 24. So that now has knocked us down in – Everybody's perception, so now we're supposed to lose to App State. So. so you've already played a game. This is App State's first game. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, that's not fair. I mean, really. But You would think so, but, you know, whatever. So Mark, look, what, look, we're Carolina fans. We're used to this. This happens every year. Everyone loves to hate you guys. If they do. Or they really do. loves to love you. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, basketball more, especially. There's a lot more hate to us. Here's what I'm pissed off about. NC State is playing East Carolina, and that's going to be a way – I think that's a – that that's game has more game. implications than any, anything else. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a great game. But, yeah, everybody's talking about how <laughs> yeah. we're going to lose to App State. So. so what's the final score going to be, Marcus, App State versus UNC? Um, App State 27, Carolina 24. Oh! oh. Yeah, I, I've got a son You're going against, against the App, spread. So I got a – I got to pull for app. Oh yeah, I'm a Carolina his, fan too. I'm torn, but I got a kid at app. So his gonna... he's an app dad. Yeah, yeah. So is he playing twenty four twenty seven the... Appalachian? App is he playing football or is no, he? No, 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 no. Okay. So Senior. App State is in the Sun Belt Conference, which oh. is a Division One conference. Okay. Yeah, but they're I mean they're a smaller school. Yeah, but lately but, I mean when they beat Michigan State, what what year was that? Michigan, yeah. Uh, was it Michigan or Michigan State? Two years ago? It's, it's been a while. Like, they yeah. beat them, like, the first game, and it just ruined their chances of winning. And they were they were supposed to go, like, maybe, they're supposed to be a good team and yeah. play for the national championship that year, potentially. Yeah. And they just ruined their hopes when App State beat them. That was a crazy game. Everyone's changing the channel in the fourth quarter. And they blocked that field goal. Blocked the field goal. That's what won it. Uh, real quick, the Allen Jackson, what's the final score going to be? Um, I'll I'll go the same score as Mark except reversed. Okay, so a low most, scoring most affair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First first games a lot of defensive mm-hmm. battles going on. Offense is still figuring stuff out. Okay, well let me weigh in. Um, I have no idea, but just to be different, I'll say uh, I'll say UNC UNC uh, thirty eight. App twenty one. Wow, I like I like that. I think UNC is pissed off now. <laughs> they just beat someone, and now they're an underdog against App. And I don't know. Maybe App's come down a peg. I have now, no idea. In all fairness, I will say that yeah, we 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 were supposed to have beat this team last weekend a little better. Yeah, this team had a lot of players ineligible at the last minute, academic suspension. Yeah, so they barely brought enough players to play. I think on the team. 
Uh -huh. So we, we should have killed them a little more, but we didn't. But still, I still think yeah. that was pretty uh, – well, it'll be interesting it's a rough to see. To do for the team there. That's an hour away. Well, come let's back go. next week. Let's see who was right. Uh, let's move on to the next hashtag. What not to wear to work was trending on Twitter. Just those words. What not to wear to work. And, uh, you know, that's what happens on Twitter. You get a hashtag going, people put memes up and pictures, and there's people. That one office was like, come dressed how you dressed at home during COVID <laughs> when you had to zoom in. And you see people wearing, like, suit tops and then, like, you know, just shorts and flip-flops, bottoms. But uh, let's let's go. Marcus, does your – where you work, is there a uh, dress code? Yeah, no tank tops or half shirts or net <laughs> oh my goodness. shirts. Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking at some of these. Oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, we can't wear shorts to work. Yeah. Uh, long pants. But other than that, whatever. Um, I mean, you guys can wear whatever you want in here. You yeah. Know? I would say what not to wear to work. I would say, oh, is Elliot watching this? The Elliot's yeah. not here, by the way. I don't know if y'all have noticed. He, he's all over. He, he, he's is he throwing, watching? Yeah, he's throwing comments. Okay. So let me talk directly to Elliot <laughs> uh, for this hashtag. What not to wear to work. Too much cologne. Yeah, I was going to say that. <clears throat> and face mask. I thought it smelled Oh, bad. yeah, and the damn face mask. Take that damn thing off finally. Lose it in Florida. Yes. Amanda, take that thing from him. <laughs> yeah. Throw if it he, away. If you see him, yeah, grab it and burn it. Yeah, the, the cologne's a little much. Yeah. Love yeah. you, but uh, and it's... I don't know so, it's, Amanda, this is how much he's guys crazy for you. I mean, like, he thinks... When we go live here on this show, he thinks we got smell a vision that you can smell him through the computer. Or he goes to the mirror and yeah. like picks oh, he, himself up, puts cologne on. Yeah, comes back. And Dollar like, General what cologne. Are you doing? It's all dudes in here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's what was trending, huh? No, you smell like a French whore. <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy. Sorry, Elliot. I love you too, but he's more right. like a redneck whore. <laughs> All right, so that is what is trending, and let's move on to our next segment. Time is sideways. We get, you know, we're trying to get some, through some segments here. Um, now, this might be what I call the anchor of the show. You know, I call in other radio stations, and I give them uh, this show. In fact, I called into a, a radio show in Orlando, Florida, this morning, and 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 tried to give them this uh, mm. story. But they had to hit the dump button. Oh, that's not just so we, huh? uh, we can't we can't we can't talk about this. But guess what? We can <laughs> because we are on the internet. We What's are not problem? regulated by the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC. So we're going to talk about it. You know, there's a lot of negative things going on in the news. A lot of politics and pandemics, and we ignore that. Uh, we find the weird, crazy stories that happen throughout the country. They can be best described by Justin Clyde Williams. We're just small town dudes with small town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All right. Well, I'm going to give you the headline again. Um, a Hooters waitress was caught dipping chicken wings in her vagina. Did y'all hear about this? Video, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. Uh, yeah, this whole thing sounds fishy. <laughs> ah. Yeah, number one, this is gross as hell. Um, number two, I'm confused. How do you dip a chicken wing into a vagina? Don't you have to insert it? Wouldn't it go up? You know what I mean? I mean, when you put a dip in your mouth, it's going your bottom lip, not up here. Yeah. When you put your, when you dip your toe in the water, it's going down. I mean, how do you, you know, when you, you don't dip a tampon, it goes up. <laughs> I mean, was this lady upside down when she was dipping these wings? Was she on her, on her back? Was she Must doing have. a handstand? Right. Her Had her legs behind her back, maybe. I don't know. How do you do that? That's why I'm confused right away with the word caught dipping. I think they just, whoever wrote this headline, thought it'd be funny to use dipping because that's what you do with chicken wings. You dip it. Um, so, yeah. In Houston, Texas, 24-year-old Jessica Sinclair was taken into police custody after she was witnessed by coworkers 
dipping hot wings into her vagina before serving them to customers. Ugh, happy Taco Tuesday. <laughs> and you thought spitting in food was the worst that could happen. Now look at her mugshot. Do you, uh, everybody look at that? Yeah, she's Can you pretty. See she's hot. Yeah. Hot, saucy brunette. So she's not a fire crotch. But I got a lot of questions. Were these chicken wings, were they were they cooked? Were they raw? Were they frozen? You know? Did she serve them with curly fries? Because I'd imagine that's what you would do if you actually pull out a curly fry. That's <laughs> pubic hair reference. It sounds painful, you know. Have you ever, like, ate chicken wings that were hot and then used the bathroom and accidentally touched yourself down yeah, there? Okay. Yeah. And how bad it burns? It burns. Yeah. So can you imagine sticking that inside of your body? Well, hopefully it was uh, like a uh, lemon. What, what flavor do you Maybe make? a dry rub. Yeah, it's probably uh, naked maybe. Naked would be so the way to Hooters go. Hooters has naked, no flavor. Yeah. So we got wings up in here. We're going to have some in a minute, but let's get through this story first. Authorities said she did this to customers who were rude or made off remarks about her appearance, and she did it while she was on and off her period. Mm, both times. Yeah. Wow. On and off the period. Wow. Some of the crowd that I've seen at Hooters probably is not going to mind this too often. Right. <laughs> There'll be some sickos yeah. out there who are into this. But if she did it on and off her period, that means it wasn't just an isolated incident. That means she's done this more than once. Because if twice. I know anything about the female period, it, it's more than one day. You know what I mean? you yeah. gotta you got to go in there a couple times. I wonder how many wings she stuffed in there. That's one hungry kitty, guys. I wonder if she likes drums or flats more. Oh, I think, I, I think I'd rather... Uh, I mean, naked, probably, I agree with you. Naked would be better than breaded. Drum's probably more Although, satisfying. If she's got a yeast infection, that's kind of like a breaded right there. But <laughs> no, no uh, drums or flats? I think she went in drums. Yeah. You think flat? Yeah. Flat would be easier, but I think it's whatever. You know, I think this, I hope, I hope, because I like Hooters. I hope this doesn't ruin Hooters, you know? Like, what if they have to start hiring women who are in menopause? You know, whoever doesn't have their period, you know? Trans women, uh, you know, or, or they just own it. I say you just own it. Right? I say you add this to one of your flavors. Oh. This is going to blow up to something big. I mean, you're going to have guys that want to come in and have that vag. Yeah. Flavored wing. This, I mean, yeah, go with could it. Could be something big. Change the name from Hooters to Cooters. <laughs> yeah. Start serving uh, muffalo wings. <laughs> you know, muffalo. Change, change the logo. It's finger licking good. I like that. Come Speak, on in here. Speaking of logo, you, have you seen that owl? Have I seen the owl? The owl that they use on Hooters? Yeah, many times. Okay, when you look at that wing, uh -huh. just look at it. It looks like a vagina. Oh. Oh, the front wing, because it, it's kind of sideways and it's turning. Yep. It looks like a shield, but you're saying it kind of looks like a vagina. Yeah, oh, look, look at it real close. We'll have to pull that it up. It reminds me of some of my uh, high school porn. <laughs> oh, really? Wings, yes, I hear you. Uh, but uh, here's, the, here's the deal, guys. She actually could be in uh, deep, deep, deep trouble here because the introduction of blood into the situation mm. it heightens the consequences of her actions so yeah uh you could kill someone with your blood i mean think of all the things you could get yeah hiv cooties cooties norovirus monkeypox yeah Maybe. you could get monkeypox and chicken pox at the same damn time <laughs> <laughs> yeah hooters should just roll with it make it a new flavor yeah. right well, what's a, what flavor should they call it marcus uh i was just gonna go uh badge just badge just badge yeah. What about you, Isaiah? You got any Do you want names? me to say, since she was on her period, I was thinking you could call it Bloody Wings. Bloody Mary. <laughs> Bloody Mary mix. You know, have Bloody, Bloody Mary put the, wing drink in there. the wings in Yeah, there you go. Yeah, but you could get AIDS from this, <laughs> right? Because that's blood. That's dangerous. You know, if, if look, if life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. But if a waitress gives you Bloody Wings, <laughs> you get AIDS. <laughs> period. <laughs> Tampering with food and inserting wings into a vagina while not menstruating is bad enough and can carry a prison term of up to 10 years. But when you add blood, it's a criminal offense that can carry a sentence of up to 20 years in prison. Wow. She's going to go from serving wings to serving time. I bet this would be a good episode of Orange is a New Black. 
<laughs> what happened to just spitting in people's food? Why? Yeah, well, she took it up. Yeah. I mean, she, she amped it up a notch. It gets crazier. The girl's family members say that while she has the appearance of a well-put-together young woman, and she's very attractive, she actually has a disorder and suffers from multiple personalities, which sounds like every Hooters waitress to me. <laughs> um, and she has a long history of incidents that either end in a jail stay or a mental hospital on a three-day hold. So, yeah, multiple personalities, guys. She's like, uh, you ever see that movie Sybil with Sally Field? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. She, that's her. You don't she's, know what you're going to get. She's like a, yeah, it's a period piece. <laughs> <laughs> ah. The family also said if the Hooter, if Hooters had conducted a background check, this whole thing could have been avoided. So now they're going to blame Hooters on this, you know. If they did a background check at Hooters, that place would be empty. I mean, everybody in there is shady. The managers, the waitress, the cooks, yep. even the customers. You know, it's, it's not Hooters' fault that this happened, right? They didn't hire all 13 of her damn personalities, you know. <laughs> Did they do 13 different job interviews? No, they just wanted the cute one with the big boobs. Yep. How to get you in. Well, uh, she said when she gets out of jail, she's going to get a job at Red Lobster. That's oh. more appropriate. Mm. Right. If you're going to put things in your body, seafood, red lobster, it's the way to I go. I get it. So here's, here's the moral of the story. I, you know, uh, what, what's her name? Left a comment. Every dog has its day or light shines on a dog's ass once in a blue moon. I don't know what she said. But always be nice and leave a good tip or you get the bloody dip. Mm. Right, guys? Yep. That being said, let's try some wings. <laughs> Texas. The news is huge. All right. I, I do have one quick warning. Yeah. So you notice I, I was a hair bit late, we, and we ordered this early. Hair bit late? Yeah, exactly. Because some girl put it in her, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was trying to get the complete demonstration. But, <laughs> Y'all didn't uh, get the curly fries joke? <laughs> but ironically, I get there, and apparently one of their cooks walked out. So I'm wondering if there's some sort of something going on with the industry. Oh, this so, might be yeah nationwide. So we might have a special bonus. What kind did you get? I got the uh, uh, Cajun. Naked Cajun. Teriyaki. And then the other was like a garlic. Okay. So. Good, good, good. Well, there's plates over there. You guys help yourself. Um, we got a lot more show to do. And uh, we'll be right back with more country-ish after this. Hey, everybody. Let's go cruising. That's right, we're doing it again. November 5 through 11, 2023. We're going cruising, baby, and I want you to come with me. This time, seven days on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. It is the world's largest cruise ship. It is brand new. We leave from Port Canaveral with stops at Royal Caribbean's Private Island, perfect day at Coco Cay, uh, Cozumel, Mexico. We're going to Isla Roatan, Honduras. We're going to Puerto Costa Maya, Mexico. It's a great new ship, more destinations, more comedians, three comedians, Going to Mexico, we'll call it the Sea Amigos Tour, because it ain't just me. We got John Heffron, and we got Reno Collier. That's right. We're doing comedy, karaoke, all the meeting and greeting and drinking you can imagine. And you can book your spot right now. Go to johnreap.com slash cruise and secure your spot right now, and I will see you on the boat. Sundrop has another giveaway the coolest camper ever. Look at this. So much room in here. Do you mind if I try the sleep situation in here? Go for it. Let's see how comfortable this is. Normally I have a story read to me, so. The little butterfly lizard had always enjoyed <laughs> All right, Thomas, what an amazing camper you've designed here. I'm just thrilled and uh, very happy that you're giving it to me. Wait, John, this Go Camper is for the Sundrop contest winner. Well, I think it's time that the contest winner gets some alone time in his new camper, huh? So maybe you should go. All right, gonna miss that guy. 
Go to makeitasundrop.com and register for your own go. Go on now. Yeah. Yeah. Go to makeitasundrop.com and uh, get in that contest, baby. Um, but let's talk about this real real quick. Camp Lejeune. You guys been hearing about Camp Lejeune? What's going yep. on? Justice Act of 2022. For many years, between 1953 and 1987, Marines, their family members, and infant children were exposed to contaminated drinking water at Camp Lejeune, including all satellite camps. And many were sickened and died unnecessarily because of the groundwater contamination. So if you or your loved one worked, lived, or served at Camp Lejeune, call us now for information and legal help. You may be eligible for a significant financial compensation. Call the Law Office of Environmental Litigation Group at 888-660-2492. Again, that is 888-660-2492. All right. Well... I say we get to, uh, oh, what's that? Oh, he's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here. He's Listen. he's actually been here for a while, but he's he's enjoyed the show, I think. Oh, point. good so, deal. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me set up this, uh, this man that's about to zoom in here. Um, very funny comedian. I've met him in Lexington, Kentucky. I've worked with him many times. Um, he's also a TV personality. He's a radio guy. He's got his own show called the Lee and Haley Show and it's a funny sort of like newsy type, uh, you know, like does like a daytime show, and it's good and he's great. And who's zooming? I'll tell you who's zooming. Lee Cruz. <laughs> And here he is right now, very handsome, very tanned, uh, Lee Cruz. How are you, buddy? I'm living the dream, Johnny. How are you? Good I'm, to see you. I'm doing good, man. It was good to see you uh, in Sharpsburg, Kentucky, with Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's the apex of my career right there. You know, uh, <laughs> doing two minutes in front of you and Larry the Cable Guy, that was fun. <laughs> Well, uh, dude, thanks for doing this. I want to introduce uh, my country-ish bumpkins to you. If they don't have the pleasure of knowing Lee Cruz like I do, I know you as a hilarious comedian. Um, I've been working with you on and off for I don't know how many years in Lexington, okay. Kentucky, at Comedy Off Broadway. Right. Um, and then when I would go there to promote my shows, I would come on your uh, TV show or radio. I mean, you've had different ones over the years. Right. And uh, what what currently are you doing these days? Well, my main job is the Lee and Haley show, which is a syndicated talk show. And we're in uh, 13 different cities throughout the South, seven markets. We recently just added Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point, North Carolina. And so you can see us there on Fox 8 uh, around noon, I think. Uh, we're in Wilmington, North Carolina on the CW there. Uh, and then we got... Uh, markets in Macon, Georgia, and, and Columbus, Starkville, Tupelo, Mississippi, Gulfport, Biloxi, Mississippi, wow. Lexington, Kentucky, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and we're growing. And, um, you know, it's uh, me and my co-host, uh, Haley Harmon, and, and we just have fun. It's it's goofy and, and great, and it's a domestic argument that continues down the road. And Yeah, I'm, your yeah. rapport, your chemistry together is really good. And I bet a lot of people think that you guys are, are like a married couple or something because you fight and bicker like that. Exactly. Yes, that's uh, that's what I do. It's uh, you know, I compare us to, uh, you know, uh, like Ryan and Kelly, I guess, if they were drunk and angry and <laughs> upset about something, because it, it is very much a domestic disturbance when you think about it. I mean, because we, we spend so much time together and we do fight a, a lot, but it's all done with love and it's playful. So nobody is ever getting hurt. It's just it's just the way we talk. Didn't you tell me you guys did an episode where you were doing Naked and Afraid? Yeah, I did that. I lost a bet. So the bet was, and I, here's the thing. I didn't agree to the wager. I just was making an argument that J-Lo and Ben Affleck would not last more than 100 days. And she said, oh, this is true love. It's going to go. And I went, well, whatever. And then our producer jumped in and he said, well, let's uh, let's put some skin in the game. And he meant that literally. Whoever loses has to do the show naked. Oh, boy. And I thought, fine. 
whatever. So uh, sure enough, they're, you know, they just celebrated the wedding in Atlanta again, their second wedding in so many days. And so I had to do the show uh, in a, in a pup tent clothed, but then the other outside field piece, we did a naked and afraid. Uh, but I refused to take my shoes off because <laughs> I don't ever do that, John. I don't. And, uh, but it, I think that was a really fun. You could find it on Facebook or, or, or Twitter or wherever we are. But, Where did you go? But what, what? My brother, my brother's got a farm. So I went to his place. I'm not oh. going someplace exotic. I mean, we just went out and my brother's. Well, hats off to you for like, uh, you know, uh, keeping the, keeping your bet or whatever. Yeah. Well, I, it serves the joke. You know, that's all I care about. Is if it's funny, that's all did you, matters to me. Did you like over pixelate on purpose so it would look? Uh, we did. Yeah. We, uh, yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. I wanted to carry some sheet glass in front of me to magnify, but I you know, <laughs> couldn't find a way to couldn't find a way to do that. Yeah. You're, you're from Kentucky, right? Born and raised. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. What part of Kentucky yep. are you from, from? Well, the, the town that I was born in is Winchester, Kentucky. Okay. And it it's right next door to Lexington, Kentucky, where I, where I live okay. and where we do the show from. Yeah. Uh, that's the bluegrass state. It is. Yes. I want to see how well you know your own state. I've got I got a little pop quiz for you, okay? Right, far away, okay. All right. Now these should be simple. Uh, I just these it are be. easily Googleable. I feel like you should know this. Google Googleable, yeah. Uh, number one, okay. Kentucky is known as the blank capital of the world. Horse capital of the world. Boom. All right. So far, you're doing great. What right. very popular song was penned by two sisters named Patty and Mildred Hill from Louisville? Happy birthday. Boom. All right. True or yeah. false? Post-its were invented in Kentucky. Uh, true. Yes. Wow. Dr. Spencer Silver, a scientist at 3M. Do you know what 3M is? Yeah, they got a plant in, uh, I think it's Cynthiana, Kentucky, where they make the post-it notes. Dude, it's like I'm reading the Google right here. Okay. Yeah. Um, the very first American performance of a blank symphony was in Kentucky. Big popular symphony guy back in the day. First one. John Phillips. No, wait. The first one. The first. Uh, 1817. 1870. So it was the first symphony. Well, oh my gosh. Let me think. Was was it a Skinner concert? <laughs> was it? It was. It's. So what are you asking me, John? Because right, I want to get this right. Yeah. I'm competitive. Is it, are were you asking me for the song or just for the overall? Right. S s okay. I'm asking you, you know. for the the human being, the con the composer. Uh, the oh. Well, uh, I don't know. it's not John Philip Sousa, is it? No, it's no, also too... there was a movie named after this. It was a dog movie. <laughs> well, Beethoven. Yeah, Beethoven. Beethoven was in Kentucky. That's right. According to Google, I mean, in 1817, Beethoven was heard in a public venue for the first time in the United States, thanks to Anthony Heinrich. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, in no. a, a, no, a no. tavern in Lexington called Possel Thwaites. He didn't, it wasn't, well, I, no, I don't know what that is. Ludwig von Beethoven did not perform there because he got on a fight with Ticketmaster. I don't know <laughs> if you remember that. He wouldn't come here. Right, he was upset. Um, yeah. All right, here's a true or false. There are right. more bourbon barrels than people in Kentucky. That is true. That's true. That's right. According to the Kentucky Distillers Association, there's nearly two bourbon barrels for every Kentucky right. person. Right. Except our mutual friend Scott Wilson has four. Of them. <laughs> 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 it's the house of C at the comedy club in Lexington and a, a oh. very good drinker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I took a tour of the uh, Wild Turkey Distillery. Oh, yeah. With a comedian friend of mine. I think that's right outside of Louisville or close to Lexington. Hey, I think that's uh, Lawrenceburg, Wild Turkey, maybe. Or close to Frankfurt, somewhere around. Yeah. There. And the old lady giving the tour, 
sweet old lady. She was like five foot three, had an orange yellow reflective vest because you know we were gonna have to cross the road at one point, and I couldn't stop laughing because of the amount of times that she said the word bunghole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah. had no idea. Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I know. They got a hammer of the bung hole in there. <laughs> yeah. That's how they sealed the, yes. the barrel. Yeah. The bung All hole. All right. A couple more. What city okay. in Kentucky has 180.1 billion in gold bullion? Uh, it, it was Fort Knox. Boom. Um, yeah. All right. Which which they shot Goldfinger here. They shot uh, several scenes of Goldfinger, not just the Fort Knox scenes, but y'all shot Sean Connery was here. Oh wow! Uh, when they shot that Goldfinger, yeah. Um. All right, dude. You've only missed one, and uh, so far this is really good. All right. Uh, Kentucky is the original land of what U.S. president? Some people think Illinois, but he's actually born in Kentucky. That'd be uh. The rail splitter, Abe Lincoln. Boom, yes. Number 16 yeah. himself, born in... Uh, now, a lot of people, John, think the rail splitter is a term because of the railroad. It's not. <laughs> it's not. He's a, he was a bad boy. He was a ladies' so man, huh? He's a coxswain. He was a ladies' man. <laughs> yeah. All right, last yeah. one. True or false? All right. Okay. True or false? Kentucky, um, KY Jelly is a marmalade from Kentucky. It's delicious. Just ask Abe Lincoln. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's right, yeah. dude. Um, final question. Are you a big football sure. guy? Yeah. Yes. Who's your team? Yes. Well, are we talking NFL or college? What Let's start with NFL since you brought that up first. Well, I, I live about 70 miles from the Cincinnati Bengals, and I'm not some guy that just jumped on the bandwagon. I, I'm not saying I'm a diehard Bengals fan. But that's who I identify with. And now it's a lot of fun. We got Joe Burrows and, and some of that receiving core. It, I, I, it's fun to watch the Bengals finally. Yeah. We'll see I what was, happens this year. What a great uh, – I was rooting for those guys. They uh, they I were that close was. to beating the – was it the Rams, that the playoff Rams, game? Yeah. I'm a Panthers guy. We just got Baker yeah. Mayfield. Do you know anything about him? He was a Cleveland guy. Yeah, a Cleveland guy up there, yeah. For a while, struggled. Everybody, we had a guy here that was all, was a Heisman nominated. The Kentucky football is on the rise now, but for a long time we were in the gutter. But the one claim to fame we had is he's actually a friend of mine was Tim Couch, and Tim Couch went up to the Browns, and he just got ran over by a Mack truck. That poor guy. I mean, he couldn't take a three step. He couldn't take a three step drop, much less a seven, <laughs> without getting pummeled. And he could have played in the league and been fantastic. He did play in the league, but I mean, he could have been a good. Thank God for Baker Mayfield that he's down there in Carolina with you guys. We'll protect him. Dude, who was that big Kentucky quarterback that was kind of overweight? That... <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, God rest his soul. Jared Lorenzen was so fun to watch. I used to be on the sidelines when that guy would come around, and he was he was his he stood above the lineman when they were in the huddle. <laughs> he was the biggest guy in the huddle yeah so he wasn't looking up he was looking down telling his lineman you know what he's going to do but he had deceptively quick feet and could run and i always felt bad even in the sec i remember watching them play georgia and these little quarterbacks that are you know super fast they'd have to try to bring him down and it was like hitting a ford f-150 you know it was <laughs> like so big with the ball and quick so he, he was a special athlete he won a super bowl by the way he was on the team with Eli Manning when the Giants won. He was the backup quarterback. That's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Was he a tall guy? Did you meet him? Yeah, yeah. No, he's a big dude. I mean, he look. You would think, okay, he's a right guard. He's he, where'd you play? Right guard, left guard. Where'd right. you play? Yeah, huge. And he was accurate, and he 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 was like like you said, quick on his feet for a big guy. Um, oh, did yeah. you say? Did he pass away? I didn't know that. He did. Yeah, he did. I mean, he had some, uh, he obviously had weight issues. Yeah. You know, they called him the hefty lefty, the Pillsbury throw boy. Those are the <laughs> kind of things that, that he had. So, yeah, and he passed away, uh, I think, about a year and a half ago, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it was sad. It was very sad. Yeah. What, what's the website people should check out who, are, who, who don't get to watch you on TV? Yeah, well, don't worry, we ain't gonna, don't worry about the website. We gave that up. Go. 
go to uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and do a search, The Lee and Haley Show. And it's L-E-E and it's H-I-Y-L-E-Y, The yeah. Lee and Haley Show. You'll see it. We're there. and We're having fun every day. We'll make you laugh, I promise. we got a YouTube channel, too. You can watch us there as well. There you go. Take it easy, Lee Cruz. John Reap, love you, buddy. Thanks. Hey! Hey. I like that guy. He's funny. Lee Cruz, handsome fella. I forgot to ask him if he's related to Tom Cruise. You know, because they're both short and they're both tan. How many Cruises do you know? Got to be related. Right. I don't know. He should go on the Sea Amigos cruise. Speaking of cruises. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey. Segway. Let's ask the interns if there's any interesting comments in the YouTube pages. What do you say, boys? Yeah, we got a good comment from Mary Baker. Oh, what did she, she say? She said, it's a sad day when you're comparing your porn to a ho- to the Hooters logo. Hmm. Ah, that's what Mark Ball did. Yeah. Yeah. She he, was kind of f- funning him. Yeah, maybe. she said, ha, ha. She, she's obviously not a child of the 80s when we had to make up our porn. We yeah. can't just click on it like we do today. Right. You get it pulled up in five seconds. Yeah, they I'm get it spoiled it. today. I bet you are pro at it. <laughs> Mark used to draw porn. I had to draw porn one time for a seventh grade teacher. <laughs> I ah. wish that was a, a fake story. That's it's, a true that's story. True story. I had no idea. In, that guy's in jail now. Isn't he? he is in jail. I had no idea what I was drawing. I yeah. had no idea what one looked like. But today you could pull it up. I could tell you what one looks like now. Yeah. This That story is a good after dark story. We should... Uh, you know, the next time we do a countryish after dark. Yeah, come on. Come I think on, you've told on. it once before, but I not have. everybody. You got to get on the after dark. Uh, you got to get on the uh, Patreon page. All right. Yeah. Countryish dot com. Click on support. Sign up. Five bucks or more. Mark will tell you. It's I got craziest, a bunch of teacher stories. Crazy teachers. They stories. love me. Any other comments that we should be read right now before we give money away? No. All right. There might be a phone number down here. Uh, start calling that phone number because here in a little bit. We're going to take three calls at random, and we're going to play the residual check game. Now, what is that? Um, I've done some acting in my time. I've been in some sitcoms, movies, uh, commercials, voiceovers. I've heard that. Adult films. Um, And they have to pay me when they air them. They're called residual checks. And I thought what I'd do is make a fun game out of it. So... The number on your screen, call that now. I'm going to have Mark. How many checks we got sitting there, Marcus? Uh, seven. Seven <clears throat> checks. I'm going to have Mark pick one at random. I don't know how much is in that envelope. I'll open it. I'll tell you what it's for. You call in with a guest. Closest person, I'll mail you the check. Boom. What do you think of that? Let's play. Uh, what do we call this? Uh, it's a <clears throat> game that we uh, like to call... How much is that three actors gonna die? Residual check. Thank you. No smokers here. Nope, but I got a cramp in my rib cage. That don't happen. I'm going to give that a second round of applause. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Thank wow. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, Marcus, oh, yeah. why don't you slide a check? All Let's right. do that one. I'll open it up down here at random, and we'll see what it's for. I'll tell you what it's for, how it's airing. You start thinking of uh, – we'll do some in-house guesses first. I'll have these guys guess, and it'll help you gauge. How I just, you should... While you're doing that, I read a comment a while ago. Somebody was asking why you were so – Bright and glowing today. Oh, yes. And no, no reason. I'm just hot. I'm going to Tempe, Arizona soon. And, you know, I was in, well, I was in Texas. Your, your hands are orange. I've been eating chicken wings. Okay. What do you think, uh, dude? Come on. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Self tanner. It is. Okay. No, it's not self tanner. It's a spray tan. Oh, it's better. Look, than Marcus, I'm. I'm, I'm I know you're going to Arizona. conscious by my look. I don't like the way I look. And I try to be pretty like you. Right? No, no, no. You I, think it's funny to point it, was, it out? It was a comment. I didn't Screw you. say that, man. Okay. All right. This is for one episode of Jane the Virgin. Oh, okay. okay. Never saw that Internet one. Internet rental, electronic sell through. How much is this check? 
Uh, we'll go with four dollars and sixteen cent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll go three dollars and fifty cent. Mm, going the wrong way, boys. I'm going six eighty-seven. Six dollars eighty-seven cents. The closest person in the room right now is Mark Havaball. Wow. But you guys, this is a double-digit check. I'll just go ahead and tell Ooh. you. You're in the you're in the single digits. Damn, gas money. Oh, dude, I really pulled something. Singing that residual <clears throat> check game. All right, so um, the Allen Jackson. We got people in the bullpen. I can see we got nine people in the queue. I'm going to pick a number at random. Let's go with number four. And let's find out who number four is. All right, they're in the room. John oh. Rape here. Who am I talking to? Hello. Hello, who's this? Jaren. Jared? Oh, Jared. Jared. Our buddy, Jared. Oh, Jaren. Yep. So oh, what'd you say? I thought it was Jared. Yeah, but then you looked at me like I was dumb for not knowing. And then yeah. he corrected you. Yeah. Doesn't that feel, <laughs> did you feel dumb Sucks. now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're so Never been on that end. being wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy. Where are you calling from? Ohio. Ohio. That's right. O-H. Ohio. And what part of Ohio? Columbus. Columbus. Yes, 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 yes. You've called in before, but have you won one? Yeah, I won uh, $1 and like three cents. Okay. Do well, let's do better. I appreciate you continuing to watch. I appreciate you calling in. And uh, have you seen Jane the Virgin? Have you seen my episode of Jane the Virgin? No, I have not. Mm, well, now I'm going to root against you, Jerry. <laughs> Plus, you've already won one, so. But no. All right, Jaron, how much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? I'm going to go eleven fifty. dollars $11.50. Lock him in, the Alan Jackson. He didn't get it exactly right, so it's anybody's ball game. Here's a new thing I've decided to do. If you get it exactly right, I'll double the amount. I'll write another check for my own personal... You have, a, you have a checkbook? They still have those. They give them to you when you have all these accounts, man. Oh, yeah. You know, they just hand them out to you. You know, they still make checkbooks. Oh. All right, let's pick another number at random, the Allen Jackson. How about we go with number 10? Number 10. I have no idea who this person is. In the room. Hi. Hi, what's the number? Hey, who's this? This is Lee. This is Lee from Sydney, Montana. Sydney, Montucky. <laughs> <laughs> Lee from Sydney, Montana. Did you say Sydney like Sydney, Australia? No, like Sydney, Montucky, like Montana. No, I got the state part. I'm talking about the part before the Montana. Oh, no, no, no. Are you saying Sydney? Sydney? S I S I D N E Y, but by way of L A. Like everyone looks at me like a like I stick out like a sore thumb out here. I'm from I'm originally from L A. Yeah, you came to my town to eat sushi and and be a fancy rootin' tootin' star. <laughs> That's right, dude. I did. I lived in Studio City. Uh, I got addicted to sushi, and uh, I got all these residual oh. checks thanks to Los Angeles. As so long as why did you cocaine in there? Why did you leave uh, L.A. to go to Sydney, Montana? I got, I got left out here. I came out here to work, and the dude just left us out here. And I was <laughs> like, you know what? Let me let me try to live somewhere else and make a different life. And it's beautiful out here. Yeah, Montana is beautiful. I bet you're happy you left. Do you miss L.A.? I just went back to L.A. last week for my grandmother's funeral, but were you? you know, oh, so they're letting LA. you go? They're letting you have funerals now? <laughs> Oh man, they, it's crazy out here. I'm in the middle of nowhere. This isn't Billings or, or Bozeman. Like out here, there's six thousand people. Nobody wears masks. We yeah. have like ten cases of Corona. Yeah, but, but I'm I mean, back to L.A. and it, it yeah. looks like a zombie movie. Wow, I know, dude. I'm going to Oxnard pretty soon. You know where Oxnard is? Yeah, my buddy went to Cal State Ten Island. I used to kick it in Oxnard. <laughs> kick it. I'll be up there. I'm doing Levity Live, not this weekend, but next weekend. So if you know anybody in Oxnard, tell them to come see me, buddy. Will do. I'm a little too late to come see you, but I'll, uh, yeah, I'll let everybody know. I okay, my it, friend. They do it. All right. Have you ever seen Jane the Virgin? 
I still haven't. I've been I've been hearing I've been hearing this come up in the residual checks for for like a year, and I'm like, I've never watched this episode. So well, I, I can't honestly say I have, but I will watch it. Okay, I will watch it. I was I mean, in I'm one never, episode. I don't watch it on the TV. I don't even own a TV. Well, good I watch for you. movies. Yeah, once in a while. Okay, yeah, I paint, I draw, I write. Oh, yeah, I don't watch a lot of TV. It, what, it how, rots the brain. Is that how you make your money? Paint, drawing, and writing? Shoot, I wish. What do you do for money? How do you pay sugar, bills? I work at a sugar factory. <laughs> the most mundane job. I work at. A, I'm a cog in a wheel at a sugar factory. Oh, a sugar if I factory. Money, yeah. Oh, is that code for cocaineus? Oh, <laughs> booger sugar. Booger sugar. <laughs> There is no, we literally have piles of beets that we turn into sugar. Oh, yeah. Oh, beet sugar. Yeah, that's better than yeah. sugar cane. Um, all right, buddy. Well, most, most how much? Sugar, uh, most sugar comes from beets. How Come much on, is this? People don't know that. Most sugar comes from beets. Well, I know the. I've been to Hawaii, and they have sugar cane, uh, sugar canes, and that that's where I thought sugar came from, not beets. Yeah, Sugar come sugar canes maybe like eight percent of where sugar comes from. Oh, okay. Eight to twelve percent, I believe. Dude, and I hate beets. Beets taste like dirt to me. Earthy. Oh trust me, they're nasty. Get off the phone. Hey, can you can you can you hang up on this guy? He doesn't like beets. It's my damn phone. <laughs> oh wait, we got two people on the phone? That's my buddy this is my buddy Ron. I met him up here. It's my phone. And he's he's from he's from North Carolina. No. Oh, oh hey, Ron. He's from Louisiana. But his mom, his mom was living in North Carolina. All right, guys, make a guess. We got to wrap this up. How much is this Screen Actors right, Guild residual check? Six dollars and eighty-seven cents. Six dollars and eighty-seven cents. Put them on hold. The Alan Jackson. Nobody's got it right just yet, and we got one more call to get to. I say we go. I'm going to pick random number twelve. Let's see. Who caller number 12 is? Hello, John Reap. Who's this? Jimmy Fisher. Jimmy Fisher? Yes, sir. Where are you Willow Park, Texas. Oh, I'm sorry, where? Willow Park, Texas. Oh, is that close to Fort Worth? Yeah, I was at your show Saturday night. All right. Yeah, thank you for calling in, buddy. Thanks for coming to Hyenas. Uh, did you have a good time? Ah, we had a blast. Which show did you come to? Friday, Saturday? Saturday, second show. Mm. Saturday, second show Saturday. was a I dang like how good. You said Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, that's how you do it. Saturday. Yeah. That's how we say it, dude. Um, that's right. Well, what do you do for a living, buddy? Ah, carpenter. Oh, really? Do you like our custom made desk? This is a um Isaiah's cousin? Yes, sir. My made, second cousin. He calls himself Irvin. a carpenter. He's a carpenter. That's, yeah. that's a pretty beautiful desk there. Yeah, they did a good job. Um, well, you know, Jesus was a carpenter, too. The greatest man ever. <laughs> 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 um, so you were at the show. and um, So how old are you, buddy? Uh, 47. 47. And how did you know that I was coming to Fort Worth, Texas? How did you... How were you made aware of this? Facebook. Uh, something on my Facebook page or something Hyena's Facebook page? Uh, actually, I think it was Hyena's okay. sponsored page. Good to know. Good to know. I like mm -hmm. to take it in. Now, have you ever, had you ever seen me perform before? Uh, just on uh, Last Comic Standing. Right. And now I got a new, a new, a new buddy who's watching the show. Yeah. That's how we do. We try to hook them. Yeah. Well, thanks, buddy. I'm rooting for you. First time caller. Just saw me in Fort Worth, Tejas. All right, you get the last guess, man. It's anybody's ball game. How much is this screen actor? Twelve dollars and twelve dollars and seventeen cents. Twelve dollars and seventeen cents. Lock them in. Now, here's what I've I've already handed the check over to Sergeant Mark Have a Ball, and uh, what he does is give it to the Allen Jackson. And Moose in the sound booth. And what they do is we got an algorithm machine and they got to feed it into the mainframe. They got two keys. They have to turn at the same time. 
And then the air conditioning has to be on full blast because it gets really hot in there. And uh, they're going to crunch the numbers. Mm-hmm. And we're going to find out. They have to hold their mouth just right, like that. You got to hold it, you got to look at. And they're going to find out who won. Yeah. And we're going to get that collar into the showroom. Oh, wow. Really? In the back. They're still sweating, but they got the data from our end. Dang! I love that machine. So they don't even have fast, to do anything. Guys, is it getting faster? Yeah, we uh, we had an upgrade over the weekend. Oh, so it's now going at uh, I don't know what three times faster. Quick! Wow. It's really it's a lot faster now. So actually, it it knew the amount before the check <laughs> got back here. Wow! Wow! It's like Facebook. It's learning. It's listening. It's it's becoming sentient. Uh, isn't that the word for it? Where it's like uh, sentient. Sentient. It's That's teaching it. itself. It's self aware. Right. It is. It's like AI. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap, dude! I never knew. All right. Well, let's get the winner in here and find out who won and uh, congratulate them. We'll see if we can get them exactly right. All right. So the winner is now being let back in and unmuted so they're there for you right now hey john reap who's this jimmy fisher it's mr fisher it is uh what was your first name again buddy jimmy jimmy fisher Fisher. congratulations dude what was your guess twelve dollars and seventeen cents twelve dollars and seventeen cents the actual amount of this check after taxes, you're looking at the wrong amount. Uh huh. After taxes, you want to hold it up? Hold it right there to the camera. Fifteen dollars. Point to the amount. Fifteen dollars and twenty-seven cents wow. is now owned by Jimmy Fisher. Yep. Congra- Hell yeah. Congratulations. I'm gonna retire. Yeah. What do you say? He said he's going to retire. He's going to retire, yeah. Well, we were going to ask you one question. What are you going to do with all that cash? I'm going to Disney World. Yeah. Ah. That's what, that's what right, you do. Jimmy. So all you got to do now to claim this check, real simple, go to the website, countryish.com. You click on con- uh, contact, right? And then you fill out the yep. form. Right, you tell us, hey, this is Jimmy Fisher, and I won the check for this much, and and here's my address, and then we will send you this check in the mail ASAP. What do you say, buddy? That's freaking awesome, man. Yeah, pretty cool. Well, listen, it pays, it pays, it pays to watch and listen, country ish. Now, Jimmy, I'm hoping you'll go out and tell your, all your other friends in in Texas and surrounding areas, and we'll grow this puppy Whoa, together. Sure. Yeah? All right. Heck yeah. Well, there you go. Thanks, Jimmy. We're going to hang up on you now, but go to the website. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to go around the room real quick for any uh, last-minute comments, corrections, anything, uh, concerns. I'll go with so Isaiah. I want to give a shout-out to 49 Winchester. They played at the Opry today at like the Grand Ole Opry. Yes, sir. The Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. I sent Alan a little short clip of it. Was this happening during our show? Yes, sir. Forty nine Winchester. That is Isaiah's cousins. They got a standing ovation. Yeah. <coughs> well, we love ourselves some Forty Nine Winchester. Good people. They were on this show. And uh, look at them now. They they got the country-ish bump, and now they're at the Grand Ole Opry. Well, you don't have to thank us. But that so guy's talented. He can sing. Yeah, so that's my cousin Isaac. Yep. And uh, the song is Russell County Line. Russell County Line. That's you know what? Now we have in common. We've both played the Grand Ole Opry. There you go. Me and you 49 Winchester. Congratulations, 49 Winchester. Any other comments from YouTube at the last minute we want to throw out or throw in? No, mo- most of us getting in with the uh, with the different guesses and everything. Yeah. And, uh, of course, picking on me about my porn choice. Yeah. Um, but I do, want to, I do want to say thank you to the ones that reached out when I had the uh, COVID. And right. So, uh, had COVID, dude. He gets, you're a late bloomer. I was a late bloomer. What took you so long to pop your cherry? Uh, <laughs> I couldn't find a hole. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, you know, these people who are just now getting covered for the first time, I'm like, where you been? Yeah, they got Join the, the party. They got it easy. 
We got we got it back when it was hard. Dude, I got it right out the gate. Yeah. O- well, I was OG looking Kobe. at Cliff Wilson almost, and everything. And we uh, almost died. <laughs> I almost died a couple times. I did, too. Uh, well, we're glad you're better. Yes. And hit, so Mark is saying thank you for uh, the well wishes and everything. Um, Isaiah, I feel like there's something else. Anything else I'm forgetting? No, I think that's it. <clears throat> what about uh, – and there's something going on in Hickory? Oh, yeah. Uh, Corner Pocket. They're filming Bar Rescue <laughs> at the Corner was. Pocket yeah. here in Hickory. So the TV oh. show Bar Rescue with John Tapper. That's going to mm-hmm. be nasty. He's, he's famous for saying, shut it down! Yeah. <laughs> shut it down! <laughs> like he yells at people. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see what he does at that place. Corner Pocket in Hickory. It's a little, you know, it's a pool hall. Name it says it all. Western, Corner Pocket. It used to be a steakhouse, yeah. right? It did used to be a yeah, Western, Western steer. steer a I Western believe. steer, so it's yeah. got that look to it. Yeah. But they turned it into a little corner. So yeah. I've been to the corner pocket a few times. Oh yeah, me and Elliot. Yep. Oh, you going? You went on a date? <laughs> you and Elliot? No, it wasn't a date. No, y'all were hanging out. <laughs> um, yeah, and Elliot, if you're watching, uh, what the hell, dude? You coming back? You know, what did he do? Did he deliver a car? Yeah, he delivered Amanda's car. Right. So Elliot delivered one of our super fans, and now his special friend. A brand new uh, car from Hendrick Honda Hickory. Shout out Hendrick Honda Hickory. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, it yes. worked. I was just going to say, so what you do is you, you befriend everybody, and eventually Elliot will get you a new car. <laughs> That's right. Slowly, over time, if you keep watching the show long enough, and you flirt with Elliot and talk back you know, to he'll, him. He'll make you payments. He might, he might bring you a car. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Marcus, anything I'm forgetting, buddy? No, have a good time in uh, Phoenix, man. Phoenix. Don't burn up. Don't catch on fire. Uh, it's too late for that. It's Ginger's hot. get in free second show in Phoenix at CB Live, Copper Blues Live. Let me go to the sound booth. Moose, how was uh, the hum this weekend? You know, Kevin and Dirty Grass, old friend of the program, man, they they killed it at the home this weekend. Oh, it was so much fun. It. We had a great crowd. They'll definitely be back. So y'all check out Dirty Grass Soul if you had not Awesome, dude. And who's coming up? Anybody? Uh, we've got uh, no shows this weekend. We've got on Saturday, September 10th, we've got Dirty, Dirty Logic. They're a Steely Dan cover band. Uh-huh. And then we've got uh, The Chain, which is a Fleetwood Mac tri- tribute band uh, coming up on September 24th. So two shows left this season. We'd love to see all you country pumpkins out there. I would love to see the Fleetwood Mac uh, cover band too um all right i'm looking at my calendar we have to schedule the next after dark guys so let me go um so the last one we did was last week right last tuesday was after dark so if i'm counting one two three four that would put us on the 20th which is my son's birthday uh so probably not a good time to do it then what about the 27th can everyone do the 27th countryish after dark think about that um, you don't have to answer it now, but I'm rooting for the 27th because I got that whole week over. Rooting, tooting. Rooting, tooting. 27th. Uh, all right. Uh, the Allen Jackson, anything I need to say or anything I forgot to say? No, I think we're good. Did a good all job? Good yeah, great. Okay. Oh, I know what it is now. We were just informed <coughs> that the Hooter story was fake. Oh. We, got, we got swindled. We got hoodswinked. We got bamboozled. And, uh, you know, I, I fell for it. I clicked on the link and uh, read the story. It looked like a credible source. They're not going to believe any, any more small news stories. So that happens sometimes. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry. So everything about it was fake? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if how much was fake, if all of it was fake. We need to dig into it more. In fact, I don't even know if it's fake. I'm just trusting that. The person who told me it was fake, I believe them. So, so you're telling me the Daily News reported dot mm-hmm. com website is not real? I don't know. I think it's a real website. I don't know if they put real stories up there, but it's also in other websites. Well, this I, one was written by Bonine. 
Bo Nine? Bo Nine yeah, never so lies. Bo Nine, I thought she was a credible, That's a credible source. Credible source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no last name. Yeah. I, w- I will say I perused that site. There's a lot of interesting stories that just kind of... Yeah. It might be yeah. like The Onion, you know. It might yeah. be like a, a funny one. A lot of uh, sarcasm. Anyway, good job. You got us. <laughs> um, send us uh, suggestions for more small town news stories. I still love doing it. That was fun to talk about it. I thought it was real. Yeah. You, you had me. I, I believed it. Well, let's wrap this puppy up. Mark, you got to get home. You got a job to do. <clears throat> for Moose, for the Alan Jackson, for intern Isaiah, for Sergeant Mark Havaball, for John Stamos, I am John Reap, and I want to wish you a bicycle. Well, I've owned the farm. It's kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cold to sack. Don't shoot a bike and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, it's simple kind of life. Never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and your silver park cars. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, I got a podcast that'll make you giggle. It ain't number one. It's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for country-ish. Woo! Hey everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us in many different ways. There's a Different levels, you got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite, and all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, t-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support, and thank you. You're still here. That's weird. You can't quit me, can you? You like to hang around just for this last little bit. What's it going to do this time? (laughs) Nothing.